Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. In light of the recent uh, announcement by the British government to invest some two billion pounds in cycling infrastructure, the premise being that as a result of the COVID crisis, there will be a significant diminution in the number of people using pl uh, public transport. Do you or a council staff member have any comment on whether or not Kingborough will be looking to increase its level of advocacy for public transport or for uh, for cycling lanes rather um, in the in the Kingborough municipality? I think um, this is dealt with a little well. Uh, it, it is in our agenda this evening, although admittedly that's bottom up from our um, cycling committee um, to council. But um, uh, I think a, a good initiative. Um, is not only our membership of organisations like South, Cycling South and having a bicycle committee, but uh, using the city deal for this type of investment would be, uh, well, would have been a good idea anyway, um, but appears to be an even better idea now. Um, we have included in our discussions with the Department of State Growth and the Minister um, a request that we receive some funding to do a bicycle study or a, to do a strategy around cycling. And that's a result of um, Councillor Midgley's um, and, and also uh, Councillor Fox and the, bike, and the cycling committee doing um, just talking about this quite a bit. And I think um, that sort of study would be a good start. So that has been included in some of our discussions. They're still ongoing, but um, I'm pretty confident that as a starting point, we can um, come up with a strategy to, to assist us as we drive um, cycling infrastructure going forward. Thank you, Mayor. Next speaker I have is Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. And I would at this first instance like to commend the hard work of the author and authoriser and this very comprehensive strategy. And I concur with Councillor Midgley and Councillor Fox that it is exciting and opens up a wealth of possibilities before us. The particular areas of interest for me are the development of a civic spine that links the Channel Highway and John Street. And I endorse the notion of creating a new laneway or several new laneway experiences. I think it opens up a whole realm of possibilities, particularly 1D. I'll draw our attention to that on page 52, the discussion about pedestrian, active transport and public transport options into and out of the town centre from the peripheral residential areas and surrounds. I wholeheartedly support the idea of healthy spaces and places and having a healthy by design approach where we consider health and well-being in all aspects of our planning and our execution of our, our council services. I wanted to talk briefly though, Mayor, about the tyranny of low expectations and in this regard, I point to 4.5, where it says this strategy identifies these as desired strategic priorities. And I want to take this moment to say that these priorities should be critical. They should be necessary. They should be indispensable. They should not just be desired. And whilst I fully endorse this strategy and I fully commend the great work of the staff and of the, the entire consultation process and everybody who was involved with that, uh, it's also really important that we as councillors open up our imaginations for how good Kingborough could be and how good our CBD could be. And with that said, I wanted to point us to 3A and 3B because to me that it speaks volumes about what uh, the next 30 years for the Kingston CBD could look like. To bring nature into the centre through plantings, landscaping and greenery. Networks of diverse open space, places for people to sit, stay, play, socialise, strategically located and connected throughout the precinct. To me, it's so exciting that we have this opportunity and I think it's critical that we have this long-term vision, a 30-year plan. And the reason for that is we never know when the next city deal will come and knock in. We'll never know when that next opportunity is there. And that's why it's critically important to have these shovel-ready plans available so that we're able to make the most of those opportunities when they come to us. But I love this idea that, and it's in 4.10, that Kingborough should, or Kingston should be a place that is a green, walkable and engaging place to stay and visit. I note that 
the risks that have been identified in this very comprehensive report that's full of fascinating tidbits. So I, I really encourage everybody listening to take a look at the report in its entirety because there's all kinds of interesting facts and figures in there. But when we look at what the primary risk is of this of this uh, initiative, the primary risks involved with the adoption or otherwise of the Kingston Play strategy relate to stakeholder expectation that there are now going to be heightened public expectations and it's going to be necessary to communicate the real constraints that we have as a result of the, the COVID crisis, as a result of the financial crisis and going forward the many obstacles that I have no doubt that we will face in implementing this vision. But so important is that we as individuals choose to widen our expectations of what council can provide, to widen our imagination of what a livable city looks like so that we always put health and well-being at the heart of every decision that we make so that we always put healthy by design principles into our day-to-day -day operations and that we dispense with the tyranny of low expectations and we look to places which are doing it right places which are resplendent with green walls and renewable energy on every rooftop places that are, are beautiful to look at and enjoyable to sit and stay and wonderful to visit um, these places are all over the world. There are some places here in Tasmania, places on the mainland, look at New Zealand or look at a number of places throughout Europe where they have made cities livable through visions like this. So I commend the work once again of everybody involved in putting this together. I look forward to seeing its implementation and I also encourage each and every one of us to strongly consider the imagination and to strongly consider our expectations and to expect much more of council, of planning, and of the future King Brother than we currently expect. And to that end, I really would look forward to seeing a new specific area plan with teeth, something that can actually encourage, because I, I wholeheartedly agree with the Mayor that it is better to be bringing along stakeholders and business owners and have them voluntarily contribute to this vision. But I also recognise that to do business as usual, uh, some, you know, the. The, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And if we haven't seen people springing voluntarily to some of these initiatives, then there could very well be a time where by promoting this vision, by strongly encouraging it, and also potentially elements here and there to mandate them in the new specific area plan, well, I look forward to that conversation when we have it. But thank you once again, and that's all from me. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you, sincerely, thank you to all of the staff who put this together and all the staff at Kingborough Council who are doing such an incredible job in such a difficult time. It is rare um, among this pandemic to find um, moments to be able to reflect on the incredible tenacity and courage and problem-solving capacity and ability to to care for each other. Uh, it is really important, I think, that we find those moments to take stock. And it, I find it personally very uplifting to see the great work that the council has done. And I want to also reassure all those people listening and everyone in the community that there is still so much more work to be done. So to quickly go over the objectives that are in this social recovery plan to ensure that relevant information is shared effectively, identify ways to support local programs that improve recovery outcomes, develop a consistent and coordinated messaging approach, identify localised health and wellbeing services who can be called upon to assist in recovery needs, and to develop long-term responses to support social recovery. And it's this last point that I think is most important. So we need to, I guess, focus on the fact that this is now a new normal and there is a huge amount of uncertainty baked into this system because we do not know whether there will be a second wave uh, of infections and we do not know um, what the future holds. What we do know is that there's been significant ramifications already on a, a vast swathe of people throughout our municipality, people who have lost jobs, uh, the generalised anxiety, the financial precarity. This is a time like no other. But what I would like to do is to recognise the good work that is currently being done, pledge to do more, and also to reshape and revalue our values our shared values on, on the council to make sure that at the other end of this crisis, 
that we still maintain the same sense of urgency with respect to taking care of people who are in vulnerable situations, to taking care of people with compassion and with support, and to reevaluate what's important in life. What's important in life is, is not money and profit. What's important in life is care, care and compassion. And so I have nothing but the highest praise for the staff at the Kingborough Council. And I think uh, whoever it was who just mentioned that on page, I guess it's on um, the list of, yeah, so it's on page 986 of our, of our council agenda, the emergency relief in Kingborough. These are all organisations that are listed here. Kingborough Helping Hands, Salvos, uh, the, the Neighbourhood House, uh, Kingborough Family Church, St Clements and Kingborough Community Missions. These are organisations which were doing great work in our community before the crisis, during the crisis and will continue to do great work afterwards. And I look forward to a time after this crisis is over. But I also hope that we maintain that same level of commitment to compassion and commitment to care that we're showing right now. So thank you once again. Back to you, Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Cordover. Uh, item 17.4, which is the Northwest Bay River Multi-Use oh, like Trail Feasibility one, Study. Councillor Cordova would like to move it. And anyone second it? I'd be very pleased to second it. Councillor, Councillor Fox. Fox would like to second it. Councillor Cordova. Thank you so much. Through you, Mayor, it is my great pleasure and delight to be able to commend this particular motion, and I would like to pay special tribute to the author, Sue Sprott, and uh, authoriser Daniel Smee, and all of the terrific contributors. This is a report that presents the draft Northwest Bay River Multi-Use Trail Feasibility Study, and this could really be a terrific addition to our already wonderful assets of um, multi-use trails throughout the municipality. And as a local resident of Allens Rivulet, I spend a good deal of time visiting Sandfly Reserve and uh, crossing back and forth across the beautiful Northwest Bay River. And it uh, is something that has been heavily advocated by local community groups for many years, as I'm um, made aware, particularly through the Trail Riders Action Club and also residents like myself and so many other people. So the notion here is that there will be a trail link uh, longly reserved to Margate along the Northwest Bay River, and it was identified as a priority under the Kingborough Tracks and Trails Strategic Action Plan. I'm particularly uh, excited to welcome more people to the region, but also particularly mindful of the necessity of maintaining the importance of natural and cultural values um, throughout the municipality, but particularly in areas which are so precious environmentally and culturally as the Northwest Bay River is. So I'm very pleased to have read this uh, comprehensive and very fascinating um, feasibility uh, study. Um, and I know that um, the feasibility of constructing a multi-use trail from Longley to Margate along the Northwest Bay River was assessed through uh, various mechanisms, the trail route surveys um, and natural values and preliminary community consultation, uh, there is a strong demand within our municipality for outdoor recreation, for tracks and trails, for passive and active recreation. It's incredibly important that we move forward um, with respect to natural and cultural values. I'm particularly interested to learn more, uh, including the Aboriginal Heritage Surveys, and to, uh, I already note the, um, the the terrific um, summaries there of the the other values, um, environmental values, flora, fauna, and so on. Um, we are experiencing rapid growth in this municipality, and as that growth takes place, there will also be greater demand for our tracks and trails and greater demand for the expansion of our existing trail networks. Um, so the expansion of this trail network within the catchment will enhance recreational values, increase community engagement and provide broader social and economic benefits. And I'm particularly excited um, to note that we can uh, make this an opportunity where people become more connected with their community and they identify closer and have a sense of place. And that's why it's so important um, that we do those Aboriginal heritage surveys and we also um, work at speed to make sure that uh, this kind of an initiative is developed in, in a sensitive in a sensitive and environmentally sustainable way. So thank you once again to the creators of this report and I look forward to where it takes us. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, uh, Councillor Cordova. 
Thank you very much, Mayor, and I've been very pleased to hear the level of support around the table tonight about this uh, idea, and I am cognizant of the issues raised regarding financing. I will just say, I guess, uh, in development of that idea that I am pleased that there will be expectations and, and happy to some extent to realistically and reasonably raise those expectations because it's such a good idea and such a good project and so many people have poured their heart and soul into it for many years. And looking at those list of people who were consulted, um, I know many of those people have spent a long time uh, talking about this. And having grown up around that area and spent many an hour with my feet in the water, walking among the rocks there down at Sandfly at the reserve, um, it is such a beautiful area and it will be such a treasure for generations to come. And if ever you need something uplifting, you can always look to Appendix 2, the plant species recorded in the trail corridor. Um, what an uplifting and uh, terrific insight into the incredible biodiversity that we have in our municipality and how lucky we are to live in such a wonderful place. And that uh, doesn't even go even an iota towards mentioning the vast cultural history that exists in this area thousands upon thousands of generations. And um, I think that this will be a terrific project and I hope that we can precipitate it and move it as speedily as possible. And I am one of those people with high hopes and I think that we should have high hopes. We should have high expectations and a large imagination. And by having these shovel ready projects and having such well considered and thought out uh, reports like the one before us tonight, I think we are placed in good stead to see that nice vision brought to fruition before too long. So thanks once again, Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Cordova. The next item, uh, sorry, the next item. The motion was moved by Councillor Cordova, seconded by Councillor Fox. The motion is the Council endorses the release of the draft Northwest Bay River multi-use trail feasibility study for public consultation. I'll go to the vote. We start with Councillor Westwood. If you agree with the motion, please say yes. If you disagree, please say no. Yes. Councillor Bastone. Yes. Councillor Cordova. Yes. Councillor Fox. Yes. Councillor Grace. Yes. Councillor Midgley. Yes. Councillor Street. Yes. Councillor Wass. Yes. Councillor Reit. Yes. And Councillor Winter is also a yes, which means the motion is carried unanimously. We move on.